Welcome to the Uncle Ali podcast with me, your Uncle Ali, and I'm here again with Cousin Wes. How How's are, it going? How are you going? How's this week going for you? Yeah, good man, a bit better, better. I'm excited. Yeah, well, lots have changed since the last couple of podcasts. Today, your Uncle Ali is sitting on his rocking chair. Now, I just imagine this is a rocking chair. I'm going to have a beer while I speak to you and teach you some lessons. So by the end of this podcast, I'm going to have finished this beer that may or may not be a Corona because I'm not sponsored by anyone. If you are a beer or whiskey company, you may want to sponsor the podcast. Isn't it, Wes? Yeah, it's any, any, it's accidental, any branding. A- accidental, any branding. Um, because... Not because I'm celebrating, I just, yeah, I'm just going to have a beer. So it's, you know, middle of the day on a Wednesday. It's weird saying you're you having a beer, by the way. Do you know what? People can't vilify that stuff. I want people to know you can be absolutely ripped to fucking death <laughs> and still enjoy alcohol. You can be absolutely fucking ripped, just a sexy Irish god, and still drink a beer on a Wednesday in the middle of the afternoon. Are we, are we not sending the wrong message here? Are we not trying to be healthy people? Listen, see when you're Irish, you're jacked. You've got money in the bank. You're earning a good income. You can work from anywhere. You can do what the fuck you want on a Wednesday afternoon. Slippery slope now, uh, folks. You'll be on the streets in three weeks. <laughs> I'll drink a lot, Wes. I've known you for, what, two years? I've never seen you out of beer. That's mad. I've got a lot to celebrate, Wes. Well, not a lot to celebrate. It's been a challenge, and I am making a part of the podcast just to have a beer while I do the podcast because I enjoy your company. I enjoy doing the podcast. You know what? I'm going to use it as an opportunity to teach lessons like it would be your your uncle at home. You know, if I was your your uncle, I'd be having a beer at night time. Sit down, son. Let me <laughs> let me tell you a story about the old days. <laughs> <laughs> tell your mum to fuck up. <laughs> um, so... I would, I would smoke a cigar or a pipe as well, Wes, only uh, we aren't allowed to smoke indoors anymore in this fucking stupid UK. Um, so today's conversation is about MMA lessons for life, Wes, and I'll give you some show notes. Um, and I think this is important because the principles I kind of teach and kind of relate to day-to-day life, they're always from MMA it's not like I've did a fucking mentorship of a mindset coach it's not like I've you know um, I've studied psychology and stuff like that but I'm, I'm not a PhD major I'm not a fucking qualified psychiatrist therapist anything like that like the life lessons I teach you are things I've learned the hard way from martial arts and then I applied it to life and just for reference for people like who the fuck are you to be teaching me a life lesson I lived in the back of a gym four years ago um like I had fuck all and now I own a business that probably easily clears six figures a year um, and it's not me bragging it's just that I came from nothing like when I was growing up my mum we couldn't afford much and I used to get shoes and when I get a pair of shoes I would whirl them and just whirl them and whirl them and even if they didn't fit I'd still stick them on my toes are bent now because I used to stick on shoes too small for me and just suffer through it because I was scared to ask mum for new shoes because I knew she couldn't afford them and I'd be scared of her getting upset or crying or you know feeling inadequate for not being able to afford me things so I would never ask so I come from a background of not having fuck all um, and it's hopefully the lessons I can teach and teach you through this will help people navigate life a little bit better um, and understand that, listen, you can kind of feel at something and then be successful afterwards because I wasn't very successful at MMA. Uh, I was all right. Became a champion, BJJ black belt, fought for a long time, but I never achieved half of what I should have for the amount that I dedicated. And I think that's an important lesson to learn. Would you agree to us? Yeah, I think... um I don't know. I don't know what way it equates to some of the stuff that I do. So the, you know, having won an Oscar, but the skills that I have in certain areas are still valuable. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Right. Well, we'll dive in. So the first one is embracing discomfort. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the hardest one, and this is the number one reason why you should probably stick your kids even if it's not you, into a martial art, and especially wrestling. Um, understand, like, the first time you spar, right, it will be very uncomfortable. Probably the most uncomfortable thing you ever do, even just stepping into a gym full of people, and even when your kid is young, if you stick him in a class of random people, that is a big life lesson for them. That alone is going to develop you more than most people. Now, here's the thing. 
when you jump into sparring for the first time, you're going to get nervous beforehand, but you're also going to get fucking battered probably during the session. It's going to be uncomfortable. The first time you get hit in the face, it's either fight or flight. And it doesn't matter. I'm not going to criticize you if you fucking, you're a shitbag and don't like getting hit in the face. I didn't mind it, but it's still fucking painful. <laughs> and I teach you lessons. When you get hit in the face, you realize, oh, I'm not just a fragile little snowflake. You're running through life. I can take a hit. And the application of that is really important because, like, if you can jump into a sparring session, if you can jump into another physical altercation with a human being, or maybe good enough you can fight, speaking on stage... That's a fucking piece of piss. And that's meant to be one of the most fearful things you can do. But I don't fear that in the slightest. It could be going into the job interview. You can relate it back to sparring. What would I rather do right now? Would I rather get beaten again sparring by that guy who's really good in the gym who always beats me? Or would I prefer to go into this job interview? So now you can use that as a little bit of an anchor and comparatively compare what you're doing in your life and kind of, okay, well, this seems really uncomfortable but compared to that sparring session last night it's not that bad it's not that hard after all so that is the number one lesson like that discomfort you go through understand that is really important like if i relate it back to me again um i always talk about how i used to super glue cuts closed it's ridiculous, you had a little laugh there, Wes, but it's true. It's I used to get cut open and sparring, and I just get I'd, I'd super glue in the, <laughs> in the gym, and I'd just like dab it. I wouldn't even fucking clean it, I would probably rub alcohol gel in it, it would burn like fuck. Then it would get into the, the super glue and like glue the cut closed. And you can see, like, you can see above here, I've got quite a lot of skin and scars there, and that's because I used to super glue it closed. Did, uh, no, did nobody say that was crazy or what you do when you're going to mess your eyes up or what? Well, was- Guess why super glue was invented, Wes? Uh, based on this conversation, probably to heal wounds and wars. It was, <laughs> absolutely. So people say it's crazy. I say it was in alignment with the goals I wanted to achieve. I wanted to be UFC world champion. So what is giving me a better chance of being a UFC world champion? Taking the rest of the sparring session off, taking the session off and going to the hospital, or... Super glare closed, which sounds like a UFC world champion. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you've got to like have that alignment with your passion and your vision. And for me, it was like, okay, I don't want to miss all round. I'm going to glue that up, put a head guard on just to protect the cut because I would never normally wear a head guard. And I'm going to crack on with the training session. And that's what I used to do. Um, my ear was falling off the back it was ripped from the skull I taped it up with white tape with uh, medical tape uh, and I cracked on with a session and every time I got hit it felt like it was ripping off from my head and it was sore I but I got the session done I don't know what to do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't <laughs> a couple of you, things you can't, One, you can't relate that, to that can is you? that no it's like, is that normal behaviour in the gym or were you mad? Like, no, I was that, was that Would that no, be, would I, it be like three of you standing there sharing super glue? I, I, like, I was, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Two, no, in fairness, you know I mean? most people will not do that. And you probably will not do. You probably think, Ali, you're just a dickhead. I would never do that. And that's fine. That's what separates me and you. That's why I'm an Irish fucking Greek god. Do you know what I mean? That's what differentiates me between you. No, but it's see, hard. What's where, in a way, you kind of. I, I think I get the mindset of that because it's because I've never been that all in on anything really that hard that I was. You know, I've, I've kind of made similar sort of sacrifices in terms of leaving your small town to do something else and go and be and you know do things that are different than maybe the opportunities you would have had if you stayed in a small town right yeah yeah but I, I don't know sometimes you lose me when you talk about stuff that's that hardcore because I don't know how to apply that to let me really a normal daily situation like it's let, like well, let, what, what's what's like so in my day to day what's my if I if the phrase was super glue it like what can I get super glue in terms of what I'm doing today well, what's your number one goal um, what's my number one goal? So you want to get back in shape, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's one so of if them. If you yeah. applied that mindset to achieving your physique, how much quicker would you get your result? 
Very quick. I did it with you a year and a half ago, and we did 35 kilos in about seven months, I think. Would you say that was the same mindset you had back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was in a... I was in absolutely feck everything else mode, sort of, you know, so I, I let nothing. You've just answered your own question, Wes. You've <laughs> yeah. just answered your own fucking question. See, you know, and externally right now, because you're not in that mindset right now, you're like, oh, I can't relate that to anything in my life. But when you fucking put yourself in that mindset, you achieved fucking incredible results that no one else achieved. Mm. And that's what I'm saying to people who watch this. I can't relate to that. I'm not fucking crazy about that. That's just fucking nuts. You need to be fucking nuts. You see, if you are just average, if you're if you're the norm, by default, you're going to achieve normal results, are you not? Do you know what was interesting, man, looking back at that now, thinking about that space? Because I went full blinkered and I mm-hmm. felt like nothing can penetrate this kind of mission that I was on. And it, it was, you know, you're still going to work and you're still doing stuff. But then it was interesting because when I started to pop back up, in my mind I was missing out loads of stuff like I was missing out loads of social I was missing out and I, I in my head stupidly I thought I'd be missed but then I stuck my head back up and it didn't matter <laughs> all this stuff that I had in my head that I was missing out on that was still happening you know things were still going on life was still going on and it was just kind of I think I think the the discomfort that I was avoiding was all inside I'd made all the, all this I'd made these layers of discomfort that actually weren't real to be fair mm-hmm. like because once once I started doing it and by the way it wasn't it wasn't really it ended up being part of the so the discomfort for me was I got up religiously at half five every morning to make sure that I could have breakfast sort of catch out cycle in be in the gym at seven and get that bit done before work because we the workouts I was doing were quite long we were doing an hour and a half I had an hour and a half to do at least four times a week sometimes six and then I'd get all that done and then I'd arrive into the office and it's only quarter to nine I'm going you know what I mean that was more than I'd done in some of the days especially if I look at lockdown when my weight really went up you know like that was that that two or that three hour block in the morning then became more than I had done in a week actually yeah. you know at times and it just became part of the routine so that the the evenings became mine again once the mindset was was wired in I suppose you know yeah and it's I I, I 100% contribute that to you use super glue Let's call it <laughs> super glue. The, su- the super glue theory, we'll call it. <laughs> yes, sir. That's the super glue theory. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, super you glue. need to want something so much that you fucking, if you could cut, you'd use super glue to close it. You know what I mean? To close mm. that cut. That's because it doesn't fucking matter. The aesthetic appearance doesn't matter because the goal is more important right now. Do you know what I mean that's a permanent scar on my face because the goal is more important than the permanent scar on my face? Do you think? Do you think different personality types need different approaches to things? Because I I'm a fan of ritual. Like so, I had a a point in time and a horizon that I knew it was coming up to that birthday that time just after I met you, and I was asking loads of questions and trying to get things sorted so I put a what works for me I think is if I have a, a point in a place in time ahead and yep. then I arrive at it and now that's done and now that's done you know the same I've been off beer for like three months now and it's easy because I, I don't say I'm trying to not drink I just say I don't drink and yeah. it's, it's but but I knew for months I was kind of heading towards that it wasn't the next day thing you know what I mean yeah I I always think you need to have a day-to-day goal yes as well but I think there is importance to have a goal and something to look forward to. So, for example, like, obviously I'm drinking a beer during a podcast, but that's a little bit different for me. However, like a full-blown night out for me, my next one is in the 3rd of November. So that's a night for me because I'm going back home to go out with my mates uh, in, in Belfast. I live in Liverpool. So that's... My, a long term goal for me so I want to be in super shape I want my uh, business at a, a higher level uh, and I'm achieving everything up until that point so until then I'm just doubling down and knuckling down and that's what people can do we can have a goal to aim for and that also means that night out at a random weekend you fuck that off because it's like well no I'm aiming for that big one if that makes sense it does and uh, it's it's um I don't know. It's 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 speaks better, I suppose, to some of the more subtle day to day things. Like one of the things you said was public speaking, and I know a lot of a lot of the students I work with struggle when it comes to presentations. Like you can really see them trying anything and everything to get out of doing a presentation in front of yeah. ter- thirty to sixty other people. But then once they do it and get through it, you know. And I think discomfort for me as well that I'm trying to get better at is how I'm really crap at having 
tricky conversations with bosses and things okay. and employers and you know kind of it's sometimes when I walk away from a, a situation I'll think of the right thing to say but I'm trying to get that bit of brain closer to the moment than actually speaking okay and yeah. being assertive I suppose is the word I'd use there yeah that's uncomfortable for me how do you think you can fix that um it's it's like you're saying in point one here it's just kind of embracing the yes. discomfort I've, I've had some conversations that were really tricky recently and they went much better than i'd put painted them in my own head to be honest. how much better would you be at having them difficult conversations if you woke up in the morning and did something difficult that was more difficult than the conversation i think i was able to have them because after the last podcast i promised i'd get back doing exercise and i've been cycling again and it's be so on the on the on the half hour cycle of work you're figuring things out in your oh, head 100%. and then yeah. you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, i was a much clearer happier person than i always believe if you do something shit in the morning <laughs> or you train really really hard everything else is easy everything else is easy there's a good quote i think it was dan gable I'm not too sure who it was, but once you wrestle, everything else in life is easy because <laughs> it's that fucking hard. And it is a proper wrestling gym, that is, not just some wanky one. Point two is consistency over motivation. This goes without saying. Um, and this is one a lot of kids nowadays fucking struggle with. Like, if you're consistent, you will beat 99% of people. And this just doesn't apply to, like, fighting, obviously. I mean... It's with anything. Uh, I'm going to relate to spending money because it relates to you as well. Um, but uh, <laughs> you're awful lot of money. And I used to be that when I relate to myself as well. Money's a really good one for consistency. But because it's kind of linked to consistency and motivation with it, like the motivation of spending it, but you need to be consistent and save it. But I'll relate to fighting, first of all. Um, and, you know, listen, your skill set's built over a long period of time. Like, I was consistent since... I've trained martial arts since I was seven years old, okay? I did not get my black belt in BGA till I was, like, 30, 30 31, 31, maybe? I can't even remember. Because um, when I got to the stage, I got my black belt. I was like, oh, yeah, I knew it was a black belt. I'd been tapping people out since I was, like, fucking... I'd been tapping black belts out since I was, like, early 20s. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd always been at that standard. It's just the skill set and the little fine details weren't there. The teaching element wasn't there as well. See, if you have a good BJJ coach, they rank you based on your ability to coach and teach. You can't just be a black belt skill-wise. You have to be a black belt in communication and teaching. That's a really good black belt. If they can teach effectively, that's fucking perfect. And... As I dive into that a little bit more, let's give you an example. So when you start BJJ, you're going to get absolute... <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> beer, beer, beer burps. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see me burping. If you're on Spotify, I apologize. You just heard me burp. <laughs> uh, so, so it's absolutely, you should smell it Gack. as well. <laughs> Gack. Uh, I'm nearly finished the fucking beer. Halfway through it already. Um, I'm a fast drinker, Wes. Irish, aren't I, at heart? Never drink, but, you know, <laughs> genetic. Isn't it? Um, so... Yeah, when you start BJJ, you're going to be absolutely fucking shit. I'm going to be honest. You're going to get tapped everywhere. Um, and even then, people are quite strong. They're a bit of a juice head. They're going to get smashed to pieces and gas out everywhere. And it's going to take a long period of time of sucking, not knowing what you're doing, in order to pick it up. And there's no way around that. The only way around that is consistency. In fact, I had uh, a friend who messaged me, he started BJJ. And he said, Ali, how can I be a blue belt in the first year? How can I increase the chance of me getting How can I get a really good, what's, what's the fast track? Is it instructions? Is it BJJ content? Is it is this and that? And I said, there's no other replacement for time in a match. And he didn't want to hear it. Mm. And I was just honest with him. And you listen, you can buy all the courses you want. You can study all the stuff you want. It's fine. But you won't be able to apply it. Because what will happen is you'll become a librarian of the mind you'll become a technique collector now when someone rolls with me I use the same shit over and over again like I use I have a couple of games I have an A game and a B game and depending on what I work, work on I, I, I'll, I'll use that game and I've got all other aspects but like the main ones I'll use when I roll because I want to perfect it and nothing will change. And people will say like, fuck me, you used to pass three times against me, five times against me. Every time you did it, you, you passed. Like, I couldn't stop it. Why? It's like, because I got really, really good at it. But I only got really good at it through consistency. 
it wasn't from being motivated. It wasn't waking up one day and go, yeah, going to fucking smash fucking, you know, two hour session at BJJ and I'm going to go home and study BJJ and I'm going to burn out the next day because I did too much. That's, that's not how you get results. It's consistency over the long term. Motivation is great and I've spoken about that. You do need motivation. I'm not criticising it there. I'm not saying it's bad. But you can't have it at the expense of burning out and not being consistent. I'd rather have someone train for an hour a day rather than train like twice a week for four hours. Like I do the consistency and the time and the mats and the frequency is more important. The important word is frequency. How frequently do you turn up? Now, that's related to life. Because you know, okay, Ali, I get the fucking point. I have to turn up to the gym all the time to get better. Great, oh, fine. It's the same with your fucking finances. <laughs> I was a dickhead when I started earning money. Like, I mean, good money. So I was living at the back of the gym. I had no real expenses. I was ending the end of a career. I, try, I was trying to make a comeback fight. And uh, I was working at night shift, seven days a week, 12 hours a night, but I also owned my own business at the same time. So I was earning two incomes. And you think, fuck me, you must have saved a lot of money up because they were good fucking wages, both of them. No, not really. <laughs> Didn't save that much up. I would be spending, every time I was off, I'd spend thousands, like a hotel, nights out, and just going on dates, basically. I was going out for a of time, and I'd just be blasé with my money. and buy nice clothes, and buy all the best gear. But I was living in the back of the gym at the time. I'd just be, like, spunking it because I had the money. It was, like, mad when I look back. Because I was motivated, I got that money. I was like, oh, fuck me, I've got this money. Whereas what I should have done, and this is a lesson from your Uncle Ali, is being consistent or not money, saving up and calming the fuck down. Maybe just chill. Maybe just put that money in a little pot. Maybe just look to the future a little bit. Whereas I know you're a fucking dickhead with money. <laughs> Go on, tell us. <laughs> In a weird way, you can call me consistent, though. <laughs> you consistently shit with it, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. there's, I think, if you're trying to look for proof of whether a theory on consistency leading to something is real, um, there's a lot of evidence that the more junk and crap food I consistently eat makes me bigger and more lethargic. So if you really look at all the negatives in your life, it's because you're consistently doing the same wrong thing. So the evidence is there. And it's just trying to switch over to the positives, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because I'll I'll do really well with money for a while, and then I'll just get that. The f my favorite, my best friend in my brain is that little dude that just says, "Fuck it, <laughs> get the festival ticket. You've only two hundred quid left. It's the third week of the month. You're not getting paid for eleven days, but bloodstock tickets are out tomorrow. <laughs> Spend your last two hundred and fifty quid. <laughs> You'll figure out food somehow, you know." <laughs> It's, 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 I haven't grown out of it, man. It's crazy. Like, it's, I know. You're, I know. It's, yeah, we spoke about it. And like, you got a good income. It's, That's it's the fucking hard. worst part about it's it. Hard. It's embarrassing it's, how it's bad you are for money. <laughs> I, but I, if, 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 if the viewers knew your income, they'd be like, how the fuck does he spend that? But how good am I at life, though, man? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, swings and roundabouts, well, swings and roundabouts. No, but it's, it's fair enough because there's, you know, I don't know. It's one of those things that I'll go through periods of doing really well and then it gets yep. quiet and then I'll just get excited and go, what about that, 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 and that, and that, 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 is, that is like another point. Like it's the fact you save up all this money, you go, ah, <laughs> oh, fuck it, I've got all this money, let me just spend it and shit. Listen, I've done the same thing lately. I've, uh, but I've spent money lately on investments. I'm not against that. I've been investing in a couple of things business-wise to get a couple of businesses off the ground, a couple of different ones. Um, and I see that, that's the positive. But if you're not consistent with your fucking money and saving it and putting aside, fucking sort out. And the reason why I mention this, by the way, is because I know a lot of young lads suffer from this. Like, it's a really bad thing. Like, I, most people I talk to are really fucking shit at it. And even the ones that are good at it could be better, okay? Now, consistency doesn't just apply to that. Listen, going to the gym, turn up to a job and put max effort in, studying for that new skill you want to get really good at. And that consistency can be built from the MMA gym. That's how it starts. Now, the reason why I say that, I keep burping, sorry lads. <laughs> the reason why I say that 
is because in MMA, BJJ, wrestling, kickboxing, Muay Thai boxing, there's physical consequences to not being fucking consistent. <laughs> if you're not consistent in an MMA gym or sparring, you're going to get fucking better next time you come in. Then you learn your lesson. Because pain is a wonderful teacher. I don't give a fuck what your, you know, new age woke mum said. Pain is a fucking wonderful teach, uh, teacher. Like, if you're, if you're turning up to the gym consistently and you smash the hell out of that person that doesn't turn up much, there's no better feeling. It's like, oh yeah, you're going to turn up once a week and you think you're going to beat me in a spar? Fucking no chance. I'm going to put it on you. Back in the day, if someone came up to spar and they only turned up once in a while, oh, they were a target. Oh, you're not in every day? Oh, you're going to get it. And everyone fought that way. We all spoke about it. But like at the same time, it was like an unwritten rule. Like, you're not consistent. And you turn up to spar on a Tuesday morning, the Terror Tuesdays, uh, you, were, you were getting put on you. And that teaches you to be consistent. There's a, there's a problem, though, with what we're talking about here. Because... Um, there's a great Mike Tyson quote about uh, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the head. <laughs> yeah. Know? So you're talking about a very physical thing that has a very physical response. Yeah. And there was a time when money became digital. I don't see it anymore. It's a, it's this imagined, weird, not real thing. And I, I noticed uh, one time I got paid in cash and I had that cash around for a lot longer than I would have if it was just a digital hundred quid. Do you want to know how you fix that? Beep, beep, beep. Go on. Alex Ramosi has this step. You wake up every morning, you check your bank account. Oh god, okay. It's fucking horrible that if you're in a bad position. <laughs> you don't want to do it. No, if you, oh if you're good position you will. But if you wake up every morning and look at your bank account, that solves that issue, doesn't it? But is that is uh, I don't know. Will it I don't know. Yeah. It's like, have you ever done it? Well I've, the thing is though, Ali, is like I've never had money as a goal. And I've never been we ne we were never taught about it in school. We were never done economics, we were never taught about saving. The first time I heard the word mortgage, I think it was in my twenties. Do you know what I mean? I was yeah, on a film yeah, set no, in no, Dublin no, no. and I was like, I didn't know what we're talking about. Like, But it's 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 never been a goal of mine. Is it's, it your goal now? I'd have to awkwardly half admit, yeah, because I'd like to get a deposit up to buy me own place, I suppose, there in Liverpool. Go. I love Liverpool. You like, have so. to have that in your head. You have to have the goal. If it's, it's not a strong enough goal, then it doesn't reply to you, does it? But I'm trying to adapt to that mindset because I don't have it and I'm trying to problem solve my way into it. Like You don't problem you know. solve yourself into it. You hit rock bottom and then you go, okay. Well, it, I can't fucking <laughs> eat. I can't, eat. I can't eat fucking food because <laughs> I spent my money on it. You'd probably be a nervous wreck if you saw my balances, man. So I am rock bottom financially, well, if that well, makes sense. fucking look at it every day. Yeah. And look at it and say, is this where I want to be? Make sense? Mm, well, yeah, yeah. Is this where I want to be? It, and listen, it's not a quick fix. I'm not saying like this is going to fucking fix it for you, but you've got to be consistent. The, the main aspect of that is being consistent. Now, you can just sleep bad, but <laughs> that's, we'll fix that. <laughs> Next point is adapting and problem solving. And listen, as you know, fights don't go as you expect. Um, you know, you're going to, a lot of the time you study your opponent, you study his inconsistencies what he does well what he does wrong and then he go into a fight and he does something fucking completely different maybe you're rolling with someone in the gym you always roll with and he does something different and you go what the fuck are you doing you never do that what the fuck is it and he catches you in it like fucking bastard and you panic and because of that you may lose the fight or lose the role or get beat and life is going to be the same you're gonna you're gonna lose your job. You're gonna have an obstacle in the way. You're gonna have someone telling you you can't do something and try and stop you. And you're gonna have to adapt. Now, uh, I've probably got a couple of examples myself, but like my Instagram account, it's a good example. Got taken down. So I thought, fuck, had a little bit of grieving. It fucked me up. But I adapted. So, because of that, now I do a podcast in video. I'm more consistent with podcasts because they're non negotiable now. I have a new Instagram account that's like four to six weeks in already, and it's already at 3,000 followers, which is really big growth, by the way, in my opinion. It's getting half a million profile views already, which is massive. That's because I had an obstacle and I used it as a positive. I adapted. 
Now, there's other parts of that as well. Like I obviously I broke up a couple of podcasts ago. I broke up with an ex. That's a positive now because I have a lot more brain space now to concentrate on business. You wouldn't believe how much I was arguing, how much I was bickering and just not being really productive as what I should have been. Like, I want to work 24-7. I want to work all day. But sometimes if you're with a girlfriend, you're just kind of like, and this isn't being disrespectful, it's just like sometimes if you're with a girlfriend, you like needs attention, and, and rightly so, she should. But if you can't, if you're trying to focus on the business and you're all in, it's hard to do that. And like, she wants to go to this place and that place and spend this money and do this with that and this. And you're like, J- just, I just want to be on a laptop trying to build a legacy. I see that as really bad, though, man. We're not put here to just work for this. This isn't to... for everyone, Wes. No, that's not for everyone. This is mm. me. I'm just t- talking about me. Like, it's not me teaching people, like, this is what you should do. This is me adapting. And so me breaking up with her was an adaption to becoming who I need to become <laughs> in a personal perspective. And it's the same with, like, you know, yeah, there's a couple of other issues. Like, obviously, a, 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 you know, stop speaking to another girl I really liked and um but I think that's more of a, a comment on being with the right type of person that would kind of propel you forward rather than anchor you in a certain no I, I don't place. I don't want to be with anyone with like it's just a personal perspective like, it's not this isn't a sorry talk. girls no, sorry girls listen, if doors closed listen. anyone listening if you talk <laughs> listen you, you, like I get fucked do you know what I mean Everyone's <sighs> delete this. Sh- everyone, <laughs> I'm on the beer. It's the beer. We'll blame it's the beer. A, it's the beer speaking. You know. Blame the beer. Well, I probably wouldn't be able to fuck a beer. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't go hard. <laughs> There's a great Dick it's Kennedy fucking, song about fucking whiskey penis. Um, so you adapt and problem solve. Pro- adapt and problem solve is my point. And so sometimes you see these obstacles that are in the way, and it actually becomes a really fucking good thing, but you just can't see it initially. Do you have an example of that, Wes? From adapting when have problem you, When have you ever adapted and problem solved that's become a positive Oh, it's just all the time anywhere. Anything good I've done, actually, you know, it's, you it's constant. Well, I, did, I finished the PhD bloody doctor, didn't I? Yeah. I'm trying to fit that in around life and everything else that was going on. It required loads of that. And it's like you said, consistency in terms of how you find space to do those things, you know. Now, I had to binge, to be fair, like a, a couple of points. It was I had to give entire August to getting that thesis written up. Um, and just go blinkers. Like I said, I nearly went insane editing it this year. So you used to super glue? Clo- I did. I closed the windows and doors and I didn't even know what time of the day it was for about a good, a good period there when I just had to get this edit done. I wasn't leaving the room until the edit I was love done. It. See, you criticised me for the super glue, but sometimes <laughs> you did the same thing, didn't you? I got the glue out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just got to fucking stick some super glue on it and crack on. And I was nervous because I thought a lot of stuff would go wrong and work if I wasn't doing all that stuff. And guess what? I I pulled the blinds up, opened the door, and everyone was still alive. (laughs) You know. (laughs) It's amazing. Do you know what I mean? People go, my God, that's crazy. You you, fucking, that's just really fucking uh, dangerous, putting super glue on your cotton sparring. And it was nerve-wracking, man. It's like, if I didn't embrace that discomfort, like you said in point one, I would have kept ticking along and not getting it done. And it was, I think, one of the hardest parts of that discomfort is that the kind of job that I do is mostly looking after other people yeah. and then that to me felt like a selfish week where I was going to close everything off and just do something that I needed to do for me and I'm not I wasn't I'm not always good at that you know and that, that's when I lost all that weight as well and I, like, I was just I was at a point where I was like come on man you know sort yourself out for you and that's got to be the motivation I think it's got to be for yourself because I find if the motivation goes external then those things can go away and disappear and those people can let you down so when you go on a plane Wes right and they tell you about the auction masks and when the, you know, the place the cr- planes crash, crashing. Who puts on their mask first, you or the person beside you? Who do you help? Like if you have a child beside you, what do you do first? You gotta stick your own on before you help the child. Be it why? Well, because you're no good to them if you're <laughs> if you're No good if death. you're fucking dead. <laughs> if you're dead, you're no use to anyone. <laughs> do you remember the old Arnie movie? Like uh, it was the... It was the first. Remember, he was going on the side of Mars, and he's going. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not helping anybody yeah, in that. Helping anyone you? like that? Yeah, I remember what, what that was. Total what was Recall. That? Total, Total Recall. recall. <laughs> Brilliant movie. The remake was shit. 
I actually like the remake, but so I prefer the original. You use you use point four to workshop with me then, right? So you're saying resilience yeah. after failure. Now I'm I stuck because we had a the picture that I had of the before and after working with you. I have a nice big, you know, that dad bod phrase that I hate. Yeah. Um, middle aged fucking drift hanging out over the belt. And then within seven or eight months we have that photograph that's on the right hand side where we're very close to you can see a six pack coming in, right? Yep. Because I've done not much, nothing at all, I haven't been in the gym for a year, which sounds surreal to say out loud because I was loving it. Um, the sense of failure I feel around this past year, how do I workshop my way out of it? Like, what, what do I do here in terms of the resilience, your point four? I mean, I'm going to say something really harsh and right, not, not really useful in many ways, but it's what you need to repeat to yourself. Fucking man the fuck up. Get on with it. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, do you not want it? If you don't want it, fine. I do, I do. I what stuck it back in the fridge for do a reason. You do you low? Yes, yes, I do, I do. Okay. So you make the first step. You did the right thing. You start cycling in. Mm. You're starting to be a little more cautious what you're eating. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's fine. The next week you can do a little workout. The two workers are free. You don't have to go all in right away. Where does resilience come into that sense of failure? I feel for the past year, like how do we how get, do we adapt some of the tools? The, get, the, 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 tools the that resilience you? is getting started right now. Okay. I mean, <sighs> so you mean like getting on the bike, even though I've got a distance all the way in cycling and going, look how shit you are. Look how you can't even cycle. Not you sound only like just that, right? <laughs> the resilience of it and adapting and problem solving come from okay, fuck, my bike's broke. I'll just get an Uber today. No, you can fucking walk, you stupid lazy cunt. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, fuck, mm, I don't have food with me today. I haven't meal prepped. I gotta go to McDonald's and get a, get a cheeseburger. No, you don't. You don't have to get a cheeseburger. Go to fucking Tesco and get a salad, you fat cunt. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's where adapt and resilience and on problem solving come in. It's like choosing the right options at the right time and not being soft. Do you know what I mean? Like, choosing, go, choosing, res, choosing the path that most aligns with the future you want. And listen, it could be it could be something even a little bit harsher. It could be a family member dies. Mm, no, you don't go to the gym. Mm. Oh, how does that fucking help you though? I get you're upset. I get you're grieving. I get it's hard. What the fuck does that change anything? Like, you're going to be grieving at the gym the same way you're going to be grieving at home. You might as well get jacked while you're grieving. Get your mind off it for an hour. People love using excuses though. Oh, I couldn't do it, you know. Me auntie's ma's dog died. What? Mm. Fucking go in the gym. She was fucking ninety, or the dog was ninety, whatever the fuck I said. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd just go in the fucking gym. Dogs don't live to ninety. Um, but you get my point, though. There's a strange thing that happens when you're in those negative spaces, though, that it feels like. You're, and it's to do with consistency as well. So if I if I said that I was going to be in that gym floor for seven o'clock and I do that at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. that will be over and done with within an hour and a half, right? Yep. If I don't set a time that day when I was doing this, that whole hour gets pushed around the clock for 12 hours. To, it feels like a full day's worth of a task, you know what I mean? Because I don't go at seven, now I might go at nine. Do you know what? I'll go at 10. No, I'll go at two after dinner. I'll go at six. Do you know what? I'll go I in the evening that, when yeah. it's quieter. So now I've made I've made a one hour task <laughs> last fucking 15 hours, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think when you're in that negative space, that's where consistency helps, I think, over motivation. I agree. I, I, I could change my motivation, and I'm very creative brain. I can give you 11 different reasons why I should put this off for two more Absolutely, hours. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's a fucking really good point that way. Um, that, again, getting early workouts is key with that, but like you said, consistency, same time every day. It's not negotiable. It's in your calendar, block booked before the week starts. Before on the Sunday, you've got every workout already planned. You've got every rest day planned. You've got your diet sorted and how you're going to prep it. It's all ahead of time. This is the same for athletes. This what are you going to train this week? What are you going to do? For the mums out there that may be watching, like when are you going to fit in your own training around looking after your child and child care? And it might be just doing 10 burpees and 100 push ups or whatever, 10 squats, whatever the fuck you're doing, like body weight workout, where you've got 10 minutes free when you put the child to bed before you, you know do a bit of work or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, it could be anything small, but you got to put it in the calendar and plan where it's going. You're a student. When are you studying? What times? 
plan it ahead of time. Is there a danger in this point four in terms of resilience after failure? If I get myself into a state of being okay that I failed, and then maybe that lasting things lasting a bit longer to get me back on track because I've I, I'm trying to it's a weird thing to figure out so resilience after failure to me could be read as being okay after you failed right if it I'm, is okay if I'm okay, it after is okay. I, but if it's okay I might not do it and I might stay in that okay space no it's okay you don't want to be you're not complacent we don't want to be complacent we don't want to be happy with failure we accept we accept that we failed at the task we accept that there may have been a setback but it doesn't mean we stay there. Mm. When I look at something resilient, right, if I look at a material that's resilient, it isn't soft. It just If I fall through a foam pad, I'm just going to softly break through it and go to the ground. Whereas if something was a bit more resilient, I'm going to bounce off it, aren't I? And was there any kind of big defeats that you had in your career that felt like your your biggest kind oh, of... Oh, every, every couple of fights I had a couple of fucking big ones. I mean, yeah. listen, if I had to relate this to me, I lost two in a row in 2010, um, and that was because I fought a guy in Cage Warriors, and it was a shit performance because I, I didn't have my real gym. I moved to a gym to train for that, and I just shouldn't have taken it. Stupid fight in short notice. Wasn't prepared. Step up too far. It wasn't a good fight. Took a fight in a week's notice, the week after, so I took, had another fight booked the next week. I had a cut in my eye, didn't really spar, did really well, but I gassed out again, fight too close to the other one, big weight cut, lost two in a row. Shouldn't have really lost either of them. I was good enough to beat both people. In fact, the second fight, I had them pretty much finished, and I gassed. Really bad performances early on in my career. They were awful. I then decided just to lift loads of weights, eat loads of food. It was 96 kilo. And I was set back. I was fat as fuck. <laughs> and and then I got a message from the promoter of Cage Wars. He says, we've got a four-man tournament for the title, for the lightweight title. We want you in. I went, fuck, you want me in? Like, can I have a big opportunity, that? It's like, yeah, because the other guy pulled out, he tore his ACL. The guy they wanted originally tore his ACL, so I took a guy's slot. Now, this was on October and the fight was in December, which isn't a lot of time. I was 96 kilo and had to fight at 70. In how many months? Like three, three 12 months. weeks. Right. <laughs> so that was 26 kilo I wow. had to lose wow. in three months. But then also stay strong as well. Stay though, strong. Because that would be different, wouldn't it, just losing the weight? I had to you train had to, yeah. three times, four times a day. I did. I trained more did than you, that. Uh, four yeah. times a day? And more than that. Um, and so... I had to go all in of it. I had to take resilience to the next level. And that's why I do transformations now. That's one of the main things, because I, I used to you do it for fights, it. as yeah. bad as it was. I shouldn't have had to do it. I don't advise fighters to do it, but I could do it. And I lost, I turned I weighed in at 70.5 kilo. I was in great shape. I was so fucking fit, it was unbelievable. I had a massive weight cut. I was in the sauna the day of the weigh-in. The weigh-in was at five o'clock. I was in from, nine o'clock in the morning in a steam room because I didn't have a sauna it was actually a steam room which is where I, there was a bit of a sauna but the steam room was the one I was mostly in which was shit I was in there until five o'clock they held the, the pushed the weigh-ins back to half five for me to turn up to the weigh-ins they had a replacement for me if I didn't make weight because they knew I was struggling they knew it was heavy everyone else no one else had a replacement the replacement was just for me because they knew I was that heavy and I, I was cutting weight all that night, all that week. And then all that day, I was trying to get the fucking weight off me. And when I turned into the weigh-ins, I was just about on weight. And I made weight. And I turned up the next day. It was the best performances I've had in my life. Like, it was... I, 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 I couldn't gas. I could not fucking gas. I trained so hard for that fight. Like, I've never trained like that for my life, ever. Like, I, I, I'm not going to go into details about what it did, but I, I went fucking hard. Like, ridiculous. I overtrained. Like, I'll, I'll openly admit it was too much, but I recovered in time. And when I turned up on the fight night, because of that resilience, because of the setback I had previously, I was like, if I turn up, I cannot lose again. 
I have to have this comeback. I have to come back. If I ever want to achieve my goals of being a world champion, I need to win this title. Because whilst it was it was a, like a really good title, it wasn't a UFC world title. Like if I can't win this title, oh, am I going to win a UFC world title? Obviously it didn't, but like the principle was the same. I need to fucking turn up and show up. And I did. First guy I beat with decision. I wasn't meant to beat the first guy. He was really good. Guy called Tommy Maguire, really high level fighter. His brother was really good as well. And turned the next fight for a guy called Bobby McVitie. You get another really experienced, really good Scottish fighter. North South choked him. Threw my gum shield at him. <laughs> Jumped out of the cage. Ran over the commentator desk. Shout out Bobby Razak, who was like a like kind of the big name in the industry, knew a lot of people. I said, hook me up, Bobby, hook me up to the open fighter. Like, hook me up. As if to say, like, listen, he, he had, uh, you know, links to sponsorship and the ultimate fighter in UFC and stuff like that. So, like, hook me up. And he did eventually down the line. But my point with that is, it only came back after a setback, after something set, went wrong. Does that make sense? It is, um, and I know there's, there's, there's like you've got quite a mixed audience, so the fighters in your listenership will understand and relate to that a bit more than someone like me. But how do I adapt that to everyday situations then? In terms of, do I just remind myself, look, you've been through worse, you can sort this out? Is it what? What could we relate? To? What do you think is a good topic to relate to the average person? <clears throat> I don't know, man. I think I think most of us we're not we're not at least we're not we're not going to be let's go break championships, up championships, but I. You know, even just getting, even just being a healthy weight these days, man, because everyone, something I noticed when I was, and it's a weird thing that happens to your head, when I got down to 90 kilos was a great weight for okay. me. Like, in my head, I wanted to get to 85, okay. but it looked fantastic. I felt brilliant. But when I got down to that weight, I realized how big everybody is around me daily. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, yeah. It's a horrible thing to to say. I'm not saying I was going to, you know, judging people, but I just, no. you just notice it. Yeah. I really noticed what, yeah. I'd, what I had acclimatized to, and uh, I hadn't noticed on until I started working with you how much food I was putting in my bloody face all day I was getting a full day's worth of calories for a big fry up in the morning I'd have another dinner at, at lunchtime and then I'd go home and make something myself again do you know what I mean and it's it's that um, I don't know how how we, we don't all get a phone call to say do you want to fight for uh, a championship title you know so what's the what's but the normal we do normal get people daily? going up to say listen Wes you look like a fat cunt mate I wish more people would. I might do something about it then. People are very kind. Oh, you carry it well. They are. They, they, they're all nicey nice, to be honest. You, you, this day and age makes it easier for people to say overweight because people aren't honest. Bring back you, bullying, you, West. Bring to, back you, bullying. Are you, are you body shaming me, Alex? <laughs> body, body positive. Body positive. Um, which is fine. Look, you don't want people listen, to press. Listen, there's, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with being proud how you look, but staying there is an issue, okay, in my opinion. Um, but... There's a couple of ways that like, you're gonna need a trigger of some sort, and the thing why I can relate, most people can relate to, and like everyone calls it the glow up, is after a breakup. Someone goes through a breakup, they kind of go okay, and then they're going through a phase where they're like, okay, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be the best version of you, and you're gonna look back and think, fuck me, I, I fucked up there. Uh, you know, my ex is probably trying to do that right now. Um, so I think that that's the biggest thing people can relate to. You want a trigger of some sort. It could be anything. It could be something small. Like you want to look for them triggers, and like it could be a comment from someone at work. It could be the way someone even looks at you and you perceive it differently than what it may or may not be. But you want to create an anchor with that and kind of go, okay, they're judging me. Fucking watch me. And you want that a bit of a negative positivity, I suppose, but uh, or negative motivation, should I say, but you want some sort of fucking fuck. I talk about fuck you energy. Mm. That's that fuck you energy. It's like, fuck you, watch me. And that should get you to lesson five, which is focus on mental clarity, right? Yes, well, this goes without saying, doesn't it? I mean, listen, if I, any fight I've been in where I've not been focused, obviously I performed shit. I remember I fought in my second ever fight. Um, I got triangled. Uh, it was awful. I was not focused in the slightest. I just thought, I'm going to run across the ring and start windmilling. I was over thinking in my head. I had no flow at all. And even the training for it, like, I was not in fucking focused shape. Um, 
and I kind of got complacent after the first one. After the first fight, I won. I was good. Like I just, yeah, I kind of took my uh, foot off the pedal a little bit. I wasn't as fucking driven, um, and I got embarrassed for it because it wasn't focused. Didn't have that clarity and vision of what I wanted to achieve. It's things like eating sweets and my diet wasn't on track. You know, believe it or not, like I was only 17 at the time to be, you know, my defense, but, um, or 17 or 18, I can't remember. And so it wasn't, it wasn't me. I was a pro fight, it's on my record, it fucking looks shit now. It lasts for life. Do you think you fell foul of distractions that then at that point? Because there's a lot more distractions these days, isn't there? It's like I, I wouldn't, I wasn't, I was dedicated still, but I was distracted with like, oh fuck, I'm hungry, I'm gonna have loads of sweets and chocolate because you know uh, I went up a weight class. That's where I went up to seventy. My first fight was like sixty five, and so like I thought, oh, I can get away with this. Not that focus. Like, oh, I can get away with having chocolate bar. I can get away with having a little bit of extra weight. I'll just cut a little bit more weight because I'm a heavier weight class now. Mm. Oh, I can get away with, like, fucking... Maybe not, like, pushing my limits too much and doing, like, them free sessions. Maybe I'll get away with two. I'll get away with two. Most people train two sessions. So, you know, I can get away with training two. Not knowing that if I want to be the best, I need to do more. That makes sense. It and, does. and so if we, we relate to the average person like that, like everyone fucks up a lot. It's like... Um, Do you know a funny thing as well is with, in terms of distractions? So I, I would deal with a lot of students who are on different levels of degrees from, you know, bachelors to masters to doctorates and stuff, you know. And I find a lot of the time with the students, especially the younger ones, they actually, believe it or not, are more, are more focused on the social aspect of the course than their than their actual achieving the degree. Now, I don't mean the going out part. I don't mean the partying yeah. part. I mean, actually, how it is in the room and who's, whose group you're working with and, you know, all this weird kind of dynamic. I'm going, actually, you're on your own degree. <laughs> yeah. You are on your degree. This is your pathway to your life and your qualification. I don't understand why you're spending so much time thinking about what all these other people are doing in the room. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's very strange. I, I, I don't... And I, I, that doesn't... I can't speak for a student because I have never been a student at that level. But I know coming out of your comfort zone, not living in your mom's dad's house no more, mm -hmm. being social, you know, you're having sex regular now and you're going out drinking and there's loads of other people and it's just like one big party. It's like, fuck me, I can do everything I couldn't do when I was living at home. Wow. And that is a massive break of focus and clarity and distraction. And if I'm honest, for most people, that's fine. You just enjoy your social life in uni. It's probably going to be the best years of your life. Enjoy it. However, when it's time to focus and turn up, you need to focus and turn up. There's nothing wrong with going out and drinking when you're uni and you're a kid and you don't have big goals. If you don't want to be a world champion, you don't want to be a fucking multi-millionaire in your 20s, like fucking yeah, crack on, do what you're doing. However, there's still no excuse to not turn up to a class. There's no excuse not to turn your fucking phone off and stop a buzzing. <laughs> there's no fucking excuse not to set a timer to do like, you know, proper studying work and the right amount of break between so you're focused. There's no excuse not to have your coffee and be focused and have your breakfast and make sure you're fucking 100% all in and focused. There's no excuse not for doing your coursework because that isn't just a lack of focus and clarity. That's a lack of personal standards. And if I'm looking at that type of person, would I want to hire that person? No, not for my business. Would I want to associate with that person, hang around with that person? Nah, you're not. You're not my type of person. If I had, a, if I was going out with a girl and she acted like that, would I want to go out with her? Not in a fucking million years. I don't think. I don't know if any man who has high standards for himself, who does well, that would want to go out with someone who lacks focus, clarity, and that fucking absolute bit of determination being able to turn it on when they need to I'm not saying you need to be a fucking monk go out and drink and I'm fucking drinking a beer on a fucking on a Wednesday afternoon for fuck's sake but I've worked all day I worked for fucking 12 hours yesterday 16 hours in fact yesterday constant 
Like, I'm, when I'm focused, I'm focused. I'm doing a podcast now, having a little beer. This is my socialising. But I'm doing it while I'm fucking drinking. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast while I'm drinking. I'm killing two birds with one stone. So I'm also, I'm focused. I'm clarity. But I'm, like, listen, I'm not saying I don't have a social life. But I'm saying, when it's time to fucking turn up, put a game face on and get it done. Does that make sense? It's, uh, yeah, it does. But again, I'm always trying to take it back to an everyday, I don't know, what kind of people are listening but you know office office politics isn't isn't as extreme or as aggressive as some of the situations you were being in so yep. if we're if the if the in your in some of in some aspects of your world the aggression and the intensity is very obvious yeah but in mine it's very subtle and so yep. i think one of the points you wanted to talk about to wrap up was about balancing aggression and calm but in your yep. world aggression is very easy to spot in mine it's yeah. not <laughs> well a- aggression doesn't just mean like <sighs> aggression is like your energy that makes sense like um so if we talk about it, like there's some things that need calmness and there's some things that need more aggression. It's like that balance between it because too much aggression leads to mistakes, it leaves you vulnerable, it leads you to attack. So if I, for example, if I'm fighting someone who is a counterfighter and he backs up the whole time, backs up the whole time, if I am too aggressive, I'm going to get cocks like play into his game because that's what he wants. If he's backing up the whole time, he's setting me up. So I need to be an aggressive counter striker in that scenario. So I need to bait him. So if someone's backing up the whole time, I can't just run towards him and start milling them because you'll catch me. What I need to do in that situation is be aggressive up to the point where I'm in target range. And then I need to beat him. I need to fake and get him to over commit and throw and then counter. Now that's a fighting perspective. But if we're relating to like... Like, for example, if you're speaking to a manager and they're too aggressive, um, your position of that should not be fighting aggression against aggression. So if, if like, say, for example, I am the counterfighter, I'm backing up the whole time and he's aggressive, that's the right thing to do. Whereas if he's aggressive and I'm aggressive, we just start being aggressive with each other. It just turns into a fucking shit show. It's just a swinging match. Mm-hmm. And it's just luck. And the same if, if I have a manager who's dead aggressive to me and a dead shouting, how do you think me being aggressive is going to help? It's not. It's not going to be useful. I need to be calm. And if I'm calm, it may calm him down and give clarity. And if not, it also gives us space. And it allows the situation to calm down and let both people see both viewpoints. And that's just interpersonal communication skills. Like, that's just, you should know that anyway if you listen to the podcast. If you don't, now you do. Aggression, aggression doesn't solve anything. At the same time, however, you got a manager who pushes you over all the time, but he's maybe passive aggressive. Maybe he's saying, oh, fucking, you fucking bit shit, that, aren't you? You bit shit, and just puts you down constantly. Doesn't give you constructive feedback. He's not nice about it. He's just dead calm and you're like oh yeah sorry sir oh, I'll fix it and you're just placid that's not going to fix anything either sometimes you can have a bit of fucking backbone and you say listen I don't appreciate how you're speaking to me and I'm not saying aggressive as an angry don't get aggression and angry mixed up aggression is just a little bit of intensity a little bit of fire in your, your asshole do you know what I mean like it's like saying listen I don't like how you're fucking speaking to me do not speak to me like that again and uh, most people in that situation are scared of having that little bit of backbone. A lot of people are. Some people aren't. You listen to this podcast, are like, no, that is not me. I will say, and like, good for you. In that case, you need a bit more calmness, probably. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You need to be able to like, balance it. But if you like, if you like, feel like you're a little bit of a pushover and let people walk over you, and most P- fighters don't have this issue, but you need that little bit of aggression, that bit of snap. Like, I don't appreciate how you fucking speak to me. And it's that yin and yang. It's the same in fighting, by the way. Like, when you're rolling, there's a time to beat people and be calm and let people come on to you and catch them. Because you can't always aggressively force a submission. I can't just go into a fight and bulldoze people and like submit everyone with a north south choke. Okay, I, my favorite move is a north south choke, and I am well, well known for it because I won like four or five fights in a row with it. And anyone I've trained with, I've north south choked. 
pretty much. Um, bar only people who have it is a couple of like Terry Adam. Um, a couple of people who later on down the line with kind of retired. A couple of horror people as well. But most people rule if I will catch them in it. No, I don't get that from bulldozing it. I don't get a north south because I'm aggressive and use a lot of strength. Per, like, you know, contrary to what most people may think. I set it up. I make people think I'm going for something else. And then I go for what I actually want. That takes calmness. Not aggression. If I'm a chess player and I play chess, I cannot just fucking aggressively go for like fucking a checkmate and just blast the person on the board. It needs to be precise. It needs to be set up. It's intricate moves step by step. And the only way you do that is through calmness. So no matter what you're relating this to in your life, there's a better strategic approach to this free calmness but at the same time when it's time to fucking go and I need that checkmate I'm not going to hesitate and go oh I'm going to stay calm and wait for another free moves before I get that checkmate when it's right there no fucking get it right now does that make sense Wes? yeah it does in, in a way it does in a way um, I suppose it's about being strategic instead of going all in sometimes and the only way I can adapt what you're saying in terms of imagining what it's like in a ring is to break it into various steps to arrive at the outcome that you were looking to try there. Not that you're always guaranteed to get it, but at least you've, if you go jump all the way in, you know, with the big, let's say you're having a conversation with somebody who's going to be tricky. If I jump in with the big heavy stuff straight away, you're getting nowhere, are you? Yeah. So you start back over there somewhere and then you come around and you, you, you listen a bit, you adapt a bit, and then eventually you get into a position where you've said your same exact same piece of information you've given but in a different more subtle way that you've put steps towards rather than going blah <laughs> absolutely communication maybe, skills is key maybe. with that isn't and it? i'm not i'm not creating it by the way i'm not either there's Listen, a lot of people i'm sure are pissed off i'm <laughs> saying that with like communication but like if you watch my range i kind of just say what i want <laughs> It's why I, why some people like me, why people don't like me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, listen, you get what you see. That's like it's got me in shit in relationships, or even the girls I've dated, where I kind of like to say, listen, <laughs> I've said something that may offend them. I didn't mean it. It's actually because I care. Like if I didn't care, I wouldn't say what I mean. I'd just be a little fuckboy and not say what I want. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd just be silent about it. But I am just honest. I'll just say what I think. I don't care. Um, because it sometimes backfire. So that's why, like, I probably need to take advice from myself, stay a little bit calmer, or maybe just, you know, not be as as aggressive or intense. That makes sense. It does. And look, as as you finish your beer, I can't believe it's taking you a whole hour to finish a beer. Wrap, wrap up. Wrap <laughs> I, I, I could have finished up, that. I could have finished that the first fucking minute. <laughs> wrap, wrap up the six points for us before uh, we. Right. Sign off. Okay. So, gonna read them from a the phone. Quite a lot we went through there. So, and I appreciate you, Wes, for uh, going through them. So, first one is embracing discomfort. Obviously, that that makes sense. Listen, I don't need to dive into that anymore. Just fucking rewind the podcast. Listen, you're going to be discomfortable and be comfortable with it. Consistency over motivation. I don't want you just doing something and then burning out straight away. Like, you've got to do it over a long period of time. And I said this before, you're going to eat shit for a long time. So... You know, stick to it. Adapt and problem solve. There will be problems. You've got to learn to problem solve. Okay? But at the same time, you've got to, if you feel, you have that resilience after failure and understand that, listen, that may be a bounce back opportunity. Focus on mental clarity is next. And you will get distracted. You're going to get distracted. Uh, much like fighting, if you get distracted, you're getting fucking knocked out, okay? You need to say, have a complete clarity on what you want. And then finally, aggression and calm and understanding the balance. There's a time to push and there's a time to pull. Aggression is pushing. So in business, a push month. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. A push month for me <laughs> and, uh, and business would be making loads of sales and trying to increase revenue. A pull month is trying to promote more and back end systems with clients. And that's the difference between aggression and calm in business. But at the same time, communication, it could be, you know, calming the situation down 
or not being a fucking pushover and letting them know, listen, I am not fucking going to stick to this. Makes sense, Wes? Anything to add? No, just to let people know where they can find you and get in touch with you if they want. Well, listen, want we might be getting the account back, Wes. Fingers fucking crossed. I'm in touch with a few people <laughs> of someone who might be able to get it back. And if not, this is fucking pointless, me even telling you. Um, but the new account uh, is Ali McLean X. That's uh, on. That's, and on, that's on Instagram, Instagram and yeah. we're at three thousand followers right now, Wes. Three thousand one hundred, <laughs> and it is increasing rapidly because people want to listen to me for some fucking weird reason. <laughs> don't know. Why. Um, I don't know why either. <laughs> uh, and if you're watching YouTube, give it a subscribe. If you're on YouTube, give it a subscribe. Give it a like because. It helps the algorithm. YouTube's a bit shit right now. We're only at what, nearly 1,800 subscribers, um, which is shit, but we're getting there. Um, and then TikTok, I'm on uh, Ali.McLean. Got to build that TikTok up, Wes. That's where all the young'uns are. Do you know what I mean? Those are birds on TikTok, Wes. Let me tell you. It's none of my business. They're all life. there. It's not but me business. neither. I'm going to fucking stay single for the next 10 years. They're all fucking nut. Yous are all nutcase. Just If you're female and you're listening, Don't. you're probably a nutcase. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're on Spotify, give it a fucking five-star review. A lot of people listen to it, but don't give it a five-star review. It helps it so much if you do give it a five-star review. We've put a lot of effort into this. I do spend money on this. And uh, I just had a nice beer with Wes. It's been a lovely evening, You didn't get me a beer. I know. I you're not allowed to drink. One, you're not allowed to drink. <laughs> I'll get you a non-alcoholic one next yeah. time I'm in. No, no. A low-calorie, non-alcoholic no. beer. No, I, I don't do that, man. Those zero beers don't make any sense to me. I'm I'd rather just... I know. There's only that, so much Pepsi Max. I never drink, Wes. I never drink. I like little fruity cocktails. <laughs> well, can I say fruity? I could have said it. Like, feminine cocktails. Do you know what I mean? Love a pina colada to me. Do you mean to meet this or a little espresso martini? The rambling say goodnight, oh, right, say okay. goodnight Uncle Ali. See you later next week uh, where I'll drink another beer and, you know, I'll give you some life lessons. <laughs> Slash it. See ya.